Good morning, and welcome to video number seven of me growing out my beard. I have decided to go to at least the end of No Shave November, possibly further. We'll see. Today's video topic is drum maintenance, how to make old drums sound and look just as good as new drums. Recently I purchased a set of five marching bass drums that are about 15 years old and the heads are about three years old. And they've got some issues, but that's nothing we can't fix in this video with a little bit of tender love and care and some money for replacement parts. That's important too. But before we get into it, make sure that you click that subscribe button, ring that liberty bell, and click that like button. Okay. Let's make these drums great again. Step one is going to be taking off the drum covers and the mallet racks. Wow. What efficiency. With the drums all naked and exposed, now we can really see all of the dings and dents and scratches in all of them. We got some work to do here, but I am confident that we can get these into tip top shape. I also highly recommend buying one of these rim saver slash mallet holder combos. Each of these drums came with one, but I am not convinced that they have used them all the time because yeah, the rims are kind of janky. When tuning or detuning any drum, you always want to go in a star pattern one to two cranks at a time. That way the head gets detuned evenly and you will also keep your tension rods from bending and keep your rim from warping. Okay, so I got half of the bass drum heads off so far and there are a few interesting things that I found. So these Evans MX2 bass drum heads, they come with a set of muffling strips uh, on the outside. Those are the ones that come with the head. And the school that used these chose to use every single one of the muffling strips and also add another thing of muffling in the center. Most likely to get a very dead and non-resident sound for articulation purposes. The only one that is not like that is the bass five. They only used, uh, looks like less than half of the muffling strips that come with it. And that is probably because they were having the same problems that I was having with the bottom bass drum. It was just kind of thuddy and not resonating at all. And I was still having that problem even though there's like barely any muffling in there. So that's kind of interesting. So the, uh, the bass for it looks like one of the little pieces of muffling strip has fallen off at some point in time. It was just kind of chilling in there. A bass three is fully intact. Nothing came off of there. Bass two had a few more come off. Looks like there's three of them just kind of in here. And base one, every single one of the muffling strip pieces has fallen out of the head. Yeah, I'm not sure why only base one had that problem. That's uh, kind of weird that all of the muffling fell off and I'm not sure how long it's been like that, but I just took off the head and all of them were just chilling in the shell. So for the most part, a lot of this hardware still looks pretty good. Uh, some of these uh, claws are a little bit rusty, as you can see, but I think we can make it work with them. We'll just use extra lube when we put the heads back on, okay? Lube makes everything better. I am slightly concerned about the base one rim, uh, just this rim because of this, this big chip in the wood. Although I do think we can still make it work when we put it on. All we gotta do is make sure that we put the claw clamps like on this side of that gigantic chip and it should be okay. I'll just make sure that that rim goes on the left side of the head so no one ever sees it in a video. But these base two rims, these are really, really concerning how bad of condition they're in. Yeah, both of these, you can see there's like tape just covering up all of the chip wood around the entire rim. So yeah, these are basically unserviceable. So I'm gonna have to buy new 18 inch rims for the bass drum number two. These drum stands are also gonna need a little bit of work, okay? So we got uh, four of the uh, Randy May stands and one of the Pearl stands here. And uh, you can see they're, they're missing, this one's missing like two of the rubber stoppers on the top. And it's also missing uh, all three <laughs> of the rubber stoppers on the bottom. You can see it should have that to not scratch up the floor. And same with the Pearl stand, we got a like a duct tape uh, rubber stopper here. So that's not gonna work. And it's also missing one of the feet as well. So 
So I'm about to order a crap ton of crap here. We got the Minel 8 inch splash symbols, and those are not for this video. That was for the spooky drumline video, which that one will be already out by the time this video is released. We got the rubber tip for the pearl stand. We got the rubber tip for the Randall May stand. We got the rubber foot for the Randall May stand. And we got the 16 inch bass drum heads. Now, fortunately, I was able to uh, tactfully acquire the other size of bass drum heads. So the 16 inch is the only one that I actually have to buy right now. And we also got a pair of 18 inch crash symbols. Now, those are not for this video either, but I was very fortunate to have a patron make a donation for this specific pair of symbols. So thank you, anonymous donor. The world of sizzles and sucks appreciate you. Also, I mentioned I wanted to buy a pair of 18 inch rims. However, every website I go on, all the 18 inch bass drum rims are sold out. But I did find an eBay listing for an 18 inch drum and the price of this whole drum is actually less than the replacement rims. And based on this picture, these rims look pretty good. So I'm just gonna buy the whole entire drum and just take the rims off and replace them on the other drum. I just got back from the gym. I'm all sweaty and disgusting, but we got a package on the doorstep here. There's also a severed foot. That's uh, kind of weird, but yes, packages are awesome. Let's go open it. Oh, so many goodies we got here. We got two 16 inch bass drum heads, two minor splash cymbals, which those are for that other video, but well, I'm excited that they're here now. We also got a bunch of rubber feet for the stands. And of course, our Zildjian 18 inch medium heavy crash cymbals, thanks to our anonymous donor. So I'm just still waiting on that entire 18 inch drum to come in off of eBay. I think that's getting here tomorrow. So we can't finish the project completely yet, but we do have the rubber stoppers for the stand so we can fix that at least. So we have an interesting variety of rubber stoppers here. You can see like this one and that one are different and they're kind of different all across the board and some of them have half and half. I guess Randall May switched up the style of stopper they used for their hardware at some point in time, but I don't think it's gonna matter that there's two different ones on there. As long as there is one on there, then it won't scratch up the drum shell or the drum cover. So that's good. All right, I just got home from the gym. I'm all sweaty and nasty again, but we got a big, huge package out here. So let's go open it. Okay, I'm very happy to see that these rims on this drum are in much better condition than the, uh, the old rims. As you can see, I have one of them here. It's all janky. There's some slight wear and tear on the rims as expected, but I definitely think this drum was good for the price as it was cheaper than the replacement rims were if I bought them new. And now I have just an extra drum to use for parts, which is always good to have. And who knows, maybe I'll end up needing six bass drums for something at some point in life. So next up, I'm gonna take uh, the hardware off of this drum and get the rims off, and then I'm gonna take take all of the rims outside and spray paint them to make them look nice and new. everywhere.
So this is the part that takes forever, cranking the bass drums up nice and high to the right pitches. Now the best way to do this is to play on the drum for a little bit and let the plastic stretch and then go around and tune it up. You should only have to do this a few times for the lower bass drums, but the top bass drums you're gonna have to do this over and over and over for probably at least a day. Back from the gym, sweaty as usual, but we have another large package here. This one is from Mapex, and this is a marching snare drum, which has literally nothing to do with the video we're making right now. This is for a completely different video, but I'm very excited to get this, so let's go open it. Oh man, that is awesome. Look at that, that's so cool. Yeah, right, you think I'm gonna spoil that in this video? No, that's the next video, okay? The Mapex snare drum unboxing and review. This is one you're not gonna wanna miss, so make sure that you click that subscribe button and ring that Liberty Bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss that one. But anyways, back to bass drums, let's see how they sound. Yes, those sound a lot better to me. That is the tuning that I'm going for. Those very high-pitched top drums and the nice low and girthy low drums. So the last thing we're gonna do in this video is do a little comparison test. I recorded myself two separate times on all of the drums, playing all of the parts to the Santa Clara Vanguard bass drum cadence. The first time was before I fixed up the drums, and the second time was after I fixed up all the drums. And when I edit bass drum playing in videos, I like to add a few audio effects to make the bass more bassy. So for clarity and comparative purposes, we're going to listen to this four different times. The first two reps are a before and after without any effects. The third and fourth rep are before and after with the audio effects. Good quality headphones or speakers are highly recommended, alright? We need to hear all of the little minute details. After listening to those reps back to back like that, I think it is fairly obvious that the drums that are fixed up with new heads sound a whole heck of a lot better than they used to. Hopefully you listen to those with good enough speakers to tell that the bottom drums especially ring out way more now than they used to. And that definitely has a lot to do with putting the new heads on there, but I think it also has to do with the way that they were muffled versus how they're muffled now. I used less muffling strips overall. And I also think my tuning was a little bit better with the new heads than it was before. I tuned to this specific set of notes for the before and the after, but I think I just did a better job tuning in the after. And I think that's because the new heads is a lot easier to hear the pitch than it was with those dead old muffled heads. Make sure you compose a comment below and let me know what you think about all of my hard work and if it paid off. And also don't forget to click that subscribe button, ring that liberty bell, and click that like button. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. If you are able to, please consider heading over there and making a donation. It really helps keep the channel going and lets me buy new rims and drums and stuff like that. And also consider buying a custom t-shirt such as this one. I will leave that link in the description. And...
Have a good morning.